Hello and welcome back to the channel. For this episode, I thought we would take a look at mixing bass guitar for live sound. Let's take a listen and explain the process. Before we really start with anything else, we need to make sure we have set the gain properly for our console. For the Behringer, like we see here, we want to adjust our gain to average about minus 18 dBFS on the input meters. On an analog console, we'd be looking at more like 0 dBVU. Once this is set, let's go ahead and move on to our EQ. First, we should adjust the high pass filter. The filter is a slope, not a hard cutoff. The lowest note on a four string bass, standard tuning, is about 40 hertz. If you have a drop D tuning or a five string bass, that doesn't necessarily mean we need to adjust the filter lower though. The filter is a slope, not a cliff. Room acoustics and other factors like leaving room for the kick drum to be at the bottom of the mix come into play here. We might find situations where we roll off lows even higher than 40 hertz. You need to listen when you adjust the low cut and use it to take out low end rumble and mud to get the low end to sit where we want it in the mix. Finding the right spot will help give the bass some definition in the mix as well. But don't thin the bass too much with it. Use your ears and listen to the room and the mix. I'm going to go with 40 hertz here because it's a safe baseline setting and it works for this bass guitar. Unlike low end, where the energy can really build up with a bass guitar, a bass lacks much upper high end energy. We can apply a low pass filter, also known as high cut. This can help to remove or mitigate hiss, string noises, and other unnecessary sounds from the bass guitar. If you're mixing on a console that doesn't have a high cut, it's not that important on bass, unlike the low cut. We definitely could use the low cut to do some sound shaping on the bass guitar, but the high cut is more just to filter noises beyond the bass guitar range and not actually shape the sound of the bass guitar. There's not much usable energy for a bass guitar above 6K, so we can safely set the low pass filter at around 6K. Don't be surprised if you find these two settings alone are sometimes enough. Less can many times be more. Let's listen to the bass guitar right now with some drums for context. If you want to hear a little more attack on the strings, that is going to come in at around 2K to 4K. Let's try that. Resist the urge to boost lows on the bass guitar, even if you think it needs to stand out more. It has already got a lot of energy there, and we already have the kick down there as well. If the bass seems like it's getting lost in the context of the mix, but the overall volume seems okay, a bit of trick is to boost around 800 hertz a few decibels. You can experiment with the exact point a little by listening and sliding that point left and right. This can bring in some definition, whereas adding low end will usually just be mud and cause the notes to get lost more. Let's listen to the EQ so far. In. And out. And back in. And with the drums. Sometimes you'll find the bass guitar sounds a bit woolly in the mix. Maybe boxy. Maybe you want it to sound bigger, but not get in the way of the kick. You can cut some low mids for this. 
We can lift around 250 hertz and sweep left and right and find the point that sounds the most annoying and cut it a few dB? Which will usually be in the 200 to 500 range? Or we can just cut around 250 hertz a few dB and slide it left and right and listen for what sounds best in that range. You might find when you listen to your EQ work within the context of the full mix or even just with the drums that you've done a little too much. You want the instruments to sound good in the context of the mix and not solely by themselves. Use your ears and work at a steady pace. Speed will come with experience. And never forget, many times, less is more. Never think just because you haven't made many EQ moves that you haven't done enough. Before you even touch a knob, always think about what you're trying to achieve before you start adjusting. Have a reason to do what you're doing. Maybe the bass needs to be less present. That can be a matter of downplaying the attack area on the EQ. Less aggressive. Once we have the bass EQ set, we can look at the compressor. Typically, bass guitar will have a highish ratio. From 4 to 1 up to the 10 to 1 range is not unusual. If your basis is really consistent, then go to the lower end of that. If your basis is a little too dynamic sometimes, then look to go more to the higher side of that. I'm just going to go to the center range here. We also have attack and release on most compressors. You want a slower attack for the pluck of the string to come through and leave the bass with its definition. If you find compression taking away the definition of the bass, try slowing the attack. Release can be on the quicker side. You don't want the compression releasing slow and losing the notes too much. If you have a hold setting, like on the Behringer here, the same is true as well. You don't want the compression to hold too long before it releases the signal. And we have to set the threshold. Pay attention to the gain reduction meter. If you just want compression to knock the peaks off, then set it so that it's just flickering the top couple of lights mainly. Don't worry about adjusting the makeup gain for this type of use. If you want to limit the dynamic range more, raising the level of the lower volume parts and reducing the level of the higher volume parts, then lower the threshold. Pay attention to your gain reduction meters. The amount of gain reduction that you're averaging will tell you where to set the makeup gain control. For example, if you're averaging 6 dB of gain reduction, then you need 6 dB of makeup gain. If you're new to using compression, then you might want to use the first method and err on the side of caution. As you work with compression, you'll see the ratio and threshold work together as far as the actual gain reduction mounts go on your signal. If you use too much compression, you'll hear the bass start to sound lifeless. Pay attention to your ears and your meters. For more on compression, I'll leave a link to a video about compressors in the text below. On the Behringer XR18, there's a bass compressor preset. If you use the bass preset, notice it has 6 dB of makeup gain already dialed in. That tells us with the bass playing, we need to adjust our threshold until we're averaging 6 dB of gain reduction on the gain reduction meter. If you use the preset without doing that, then it actually isn't working as intended. 
Here are some other videos to check out. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. The Patreon page and affiliate links are in the text below. And I will see you next time.